Crafting can be a very consistent gold maker for players with just about any amount of starting gold. In this video, we'll go over why different approaches for crafting for profit can be effective for different reasons, as well as some of the resources you can use to look up different crafting recipes and their profitabilities. This video shouldn't be too long, so let's jump right into it. Starting off, you'll need to make sure you have a couple of crafting professions leveled to at least 400, but ideally you'd want them at 500. This is one of the best investments you can make into progressing your account, so I definitely recommend it. If you don't have your professions leveled yet, gw2crafts.net is a great site to use for leveling them in an efficient manner. The more professions you level, the more options you'll have for crafting, but getting at least one weapon crafting and one armor crafting profession to 500 will give you a great baseline to work with. There's two main approaches to sourcing materials for crafting when it comes to gold making. The first approach is to buy materials and then craft an item that can be sold for more than the cost of those materials. That one is simple enough to understand and is similar to flipping, but it does require some startup gold. The second approach is to use materials that you've already obtained through playing the game to craft an item that can be sold for a profit. This might not seem like a big difference to the first approach, but it actually works out to be significantly better. If you were to take the materials you already own and sell them on the trading post, you would receive 85% of the listing price due to the taxes you'd incur. That number is how much those materials are currently worth to you. If you used the first approach and bought materials to craft with, you'd pay 100% of the buy order price for those materials. The difference between the buy order and listing prices of most common materials tends to be smaller than the 15% difference from the taxes incurred from selling those materials. Essentially, a material you already have is worth less than the exact same material bought from the trading post. That probably sounds like a bad thing, but when it comes to crafting, it's actually a good thing. It means that your cost for crafting items with materials you already have is lower, which leads to larger profit margins if you sell the product of your crafting. You could also think of it as the opportunity to defer taxes on materials you already own. In this way, Players that play content in the game to obtain their materials have an advantage over players that don't when it comes to making gold from crafting. Now, we'll move on to how we can find items that are profitable to craft. One of the easiest ways to find profitable items to craft is to check items that are only craftable once per day. Some of these items are in fairly high demand, and because they're time-gated and limited in supply, that makes them profitable to craft and sell to others. You can check this page on the Fast Farming website to see which daily craftable items yield a profit. Charged Quartz Crystals and Lumps of Mithrilium tend to have multiple profitable items that you can craft with them, so if nothing else, those are good ones to do. I also went over this in my daily gold making video, so check that out if you want more gold makers that you can do every day. One type of item that always has profitable options for crafting is Legendary Weapons. Both Generation 1 and 3 Legendary Weapons can be crafted and sold, either on the trading post or directly to other players, which can yield hundreds of gold in profit for each one. One of the biggest advantages of Legendary Crafting is that it provides you the ability to extract a lot of value from materials you already receive on a regular basis, simply due to the quantity and variety of materials it requires. This makes it an especially good method to consider for players who enjoy farming. A large amount of the profit in Legendary Crafting comes from reducing your cost in making the weapon. If you want more information on making gold with legendary crafting, I have a video specifically dedicated to covering it, which is linked in the description. It might seem like a very daunting task to undertake at first, but it gets significantly easier after you've done it once. It can also be very satisfying when you finish crafting the weapon. There's a ton of other craftable items in the game though, so let's go over how to search for other recipes. The first place you can look is gw2profits.com. This website has most of the game's recipes in it, and will automatically calculate the profits of crafting items with those recipes, although it can be a bit clunky to use. First, go to the Craft Everything tool, and adjust the filters at the top of the page to your liking. Then, click the Update CE Settings button to apply them. You'll get a list of items that you can craft with recommended quantities and even an estimated number of times you can relist each item before you'll lose gold on it. If you decide to follow the quantities that the site recommends, you can enter your API key so you only buy what you're missing. If you just want to see the items it recommends, you can scroll past the materials list to the items to craft section, and then look at each item in more detail individually. Just make sure you're careful when it comes to items that have very large crafting profits. It might just be that the item is currently overvalued, and it won't actually sell at the current price. To be safe, you can check the price behavior of the item on gw2bltc.com to make sure nothing strange has occurred and that the item will actually sell at that price before you start crafting it. A similar but lesser known recipe searching site is gw2craftgold.com. 
This site has most of the same features, but is more user-friendly and has some better curated lists available. It really comes down to if you want the recommendations from GW2 Profits or a more intuitive searching experience. If you don't want to use those two sites for some reason, another place you can look is the recipe search page on gw2efficiency.com. This is a good choice if you already have an idea of the type of item you'd like to craft, based on the cost or type of materials required. For example, you can search Silk Insignia to find the profitability of all of those items, and then select a couple of the best ones to craft. You can also click on the items to find the recipes if you don't already know them. You could also use the crafting calculator on GW2 Efficiency, or look at crafting recipes when you're on the items page on GW2 BLTC, but using those will generally end up being much slower, unless you're only checking for that one item. You might also have to adjust the calculators based on how you're acquiring your materials. In general, the other options are just better. A situational strategy is to consider items that are new or required for new collections or achievements. When new items come out, a lot of players will buy them instead of crafting them themselves. You can make some quick gold by going against that trend. New items can be risky to list on the trading post, but also tend to be very profitable to craft. The next time a new item comes out that you want, consider crafting a few to sell, and then using the profit you get from those to make yourself one for free. The big thing to keep in mind when finding profitable items to craft is that the best items change frequently, which is why there's only a few specific recommendations that I can make. Daily and Legendary crafting are the two types that will be the most consistent. For everything else, you want to have a good method or process of finding profitable items. If you just make the same items all the time without checking the profits first, you'll end up losing gold, and that kind of defeats the whole purpose. So that just about wraps up this guide for making gold from crafting. It's a fairly short one, but the process isn't too complicated, and it will make sense once you've gone and done it a couple times. Hopefully, this video helped you figure out how to start crafting for profit, or at least showed you a resource you weren't familiar with. If it did, I'd appreciate you taking the time to give it a like, and maybe even subscribe for more gold making guides in the future. Thanks for watching.